Good evening. Our sermon texts this evening are the verses from Colossians selected by Mrs. Melberg uh, for the celebration of her 25th anniversary in the teaching ministry, a ministry that helps to reveal more and more of the treasures of, of God's Word. We open with our first hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
us pray. O God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A lesson from Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word which goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. A lesson from 1 John chapter 3. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions 
and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel according to John 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Melberg, who we're honoring this weekend. She gets to choose the hymns and the readings and the sermon for tonight. And so, what she wanted us to focus on is in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So, then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. As I mentioned, this weekend we're honoring Mrs. Melberg as she celebrates 25 years in the teaching ministry. Now that in and of itself is quite an achievement. But I would add that Mrs. Melberg also did a lot of teaching at home with her own children. She and her husband brought up three daughters, Jennifer, Shauna, and Abby, who as adults who are continuing to walk closely with Jesus as their Savior, and all three have followed her into the teaching ministry. That's really quite a legacy. For as long as I've been here, Mrs. Melberg has always taught fourth grade. And I think that's a cool grade level to teach. You know, sometimes when kids get older, they're not quite so excited to go to school and learn new things. But I think fourth graders are still pretty excited. To them, everything is fresh and new and exciting. They marvel at the joy of discovery. They're always excited to learn new things, make new discoveries, and under, uncover hidden treasures of knowledge. Now, I'm not sure at what grade level they teach all these things anymore, but let's just consider some of the cool things that our children learn through their grade school education. It starts in preschool, in kindergarten, as the children start to recognize the sounds and the words and put them all together to make sentences. Sometimes you'll see our preschoolers walking around with these little black glasses on with no, no lenses in them. They're searching for the letter of the day. Let's see, the letter is P. So they walk all over the building and they get really excited if they find that letter on a sign or a door somewhere in the building. That's the joy of discovery. This occurs in math class as well, as you figure out how math really works. Remember learning your multiplication tables? Two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, and so on. I always thought the number nine was pretty cool. Nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18, nine times three is 27. I always thought it was cool because the first column goes up by a number and the second row goes down by a number until you hit 90. That's pretty cool. As you get older, you start to figure out more about the properties of math, like the commutative property, that it doesn't matter what the order of the numbers is that you multiply, you're still going to come out to the same result. 5 times 1 times 9 is the same as 5 times 9 times 1. That's pretty cool. That's the joy of discovery. Or how about the discoveries we make in science class? Understanding how things work. Learning about animals and nature and the solar system. Maybe you had a project like you see on the screen where you started with a lowly caterpillar who made a cocoon and then you waited and watched until a butterfly came out and flew away. Or maybe you watched as eggs hatch and see little baby chicks come out. Or maybe you mixed together ingredients to cause a chemical reaction to make a volcano explode. Yes, science experiments are cool. Always discovering new and different things. Now, all these discoveries are part of the natural world, which God created for our enjoyment. But the best part of attending a Christian school is all the spiritual insights you discover through the study of God's holy word, the Bible. In our devotion today, the Apostle Paul wrote, My goal is that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that you may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In the Bible, when you see that word mystery, it refers to a spiritual insight 
that you can't figure out on your own, but God has to reveal it to you. Now, the fault is not with God. The fault lies with us, with our faulty human understanding. See, ever since the fall into sin, our thinking has been corrupted and darkened by sin. The Apostle Paul wrote, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ. Oh, we can send a man to the moon. We can harness the power of an atom. We can build super fast computers. But on our own, we can't know who the true God is or what he is like. Natural knowledge tells us God exists, and we may have some vague concept of our accountability to him, but on our own, we can't figure out how to enjoy a right relationship with God or how to make up for the bad things we've done wrong. That's what makes Christian schools and Christian teachers like Mrs. Melberg so very special. We get to reveal to you the answers to the greatest questions of life. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? Human wisdom can't answer those questions correctly. They're always searching for answers, searching for origins, searching for the missing link, searching for meaning, searching for the truth. They're always searching, but they're never finding. Well, in the Bible, God reveals the answers to these vital matters of life and death. And all the answers we need to find are found in Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Where did we come from? God answers that question in the first verse of the Bible. We didn't evolve over millions of years from microbes to monkeys by random chance and freakish mutations. No, God made this world and everything in it by his almighty power in six days according to a set plan. And Christ himself, the eternal Son of God, was present and active at creation. Paul reminds us, in Christ all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. Christ is before all things, and in Christ all things hold together. Christ is also the answer to our separation from sin. Because of the sinful things we've done where we've broken God's commandments, the good that we've failed to do, truly each of us here deserves to be cursed, cut off, and condemned from God forever. And our best efforts and all of our modern technology can never fix what we've broken. But Christ can, and Christ did. Jesus came to this earth on a rescue mission to keep God's law perfectly in our place as our substitute. And then he offered his life on the cross to take away the guilt and the curse of our sins. Of all the discoveries we enjoy in life, this one is the very greatest. I am justified, declared not guilty of all sin because of Jesus' atoning sacrifice for me on the cross. I now enjoy life as a precious and dearly loved child of God. Because of Jesus, I know I have a bright future and a glorious eternity awaiting me in heaven. And all these treasures and riches and blessings are found in Christ alone. Where am I going? When I die, or when Jesus returns, I'm going to go straight to heaven to be with Jesus. I'm going to see him face to face and enjoy eternal pleasures with him forever in paradise. Why am I here? Not to serve self. Not to indulge my sinful nature and pursue sinful pleasures. No, my life is now connected intimately to Christ's life. I am dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That means I can spend the rest of my life serving Christ, thanking Christ, imitating Christ, reflecting Christ, and sharing Christ with others. That is a life truly worth living. And all these blessings and all these discoveries are revealed to us through Christian education. You know, our society tends to put people like Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye the Science Guy as the wisest people who ever listened, and we should just take in everything they say. But I really believe that our kindergartners are wiser than they are because 
they've discovered the answers to the greatest questions of life. Yes, our kindergartners know who they are, where they came from, why they're here, and where they're going. And so they can wake up and sing with joy and confidence every day. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Now, when does this joy of discovery end? Sadly, as I said, some kids as they get older aren't so excited to come to school and learn new things. But actually, the joy of discovery continues your whole life through. Past grade school, past high school, past college, all throughout your entire adult life. There are always new and exciting things that you can learn, especially today with the availability of the internet and all those YouTube videos. New recipes, how-to projects, landscaping projects, decorating tips, or maybe you'd like to learn more about history or visit some exotic travel destinations. Yes, for those who are eager to listen and learn, there's a whole world of treasures out there waiting to be uncovered and enjoyed. Christian friends, this is even more true of the spiritual blessings and the spiritual insights that God reveals to us in his holy word, the Bible. I truly believe that one of the greatest sins that Wisconsin Sin and Lutherans have to battle against is an attitude of complacency and apathy when it comes to new spiritual discovery. We get confirmed, we graduate, summer comes, and now we think we know everything there is to know about God and his word. We figure we could just kind of put our faith on autopilot now the rest of our life. This complacency shows itself in poor worship attendance, lack of hunger and thirst for the blessings of the Lord's Supper, and no time set aside for God in personal or group Bible study and prayer. Oh, the devil loves it when he can convince us to think and act this way. He loves it when we let our guard down because then he knows that we're an easy target for his attacks. Christian friends, don't let this happen to you. Don't allow yourself to drift away from Christ and his word. Don't allow anyone or anything to be more important to you than the time you spend with Christ, taking hold of his blessings, cherishing his promises, and discovering these new spiritual treasures. Not sports, not sleeping, not fishing, not entertainment, not anything. In our devotion today, Paul encourages, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. If you enter our parking lot at the Decora Street entrance and look to the island to your right, you'll see a tree. I take great pride in that tree because I helped plant that one during a property work day a couple years ago. So I like to track its growth and progress. Now, I remember that right after we planted that tree, we had a huge windstorm, and it actually tipped that tree over. To my dismay, I found that the root ball had actually turned over during the storm. Now, why did that happen? Because those roots had not yet firmly sunk into the ground. Without strong roots, that tree was vulnerable to attack. But today, I'm not so worried about it anymore. You see, those roots have sunk deep into the earth and will hold that tree in place even when the storms of life hit. Friends, you and I can learn a lesson from that tree. We too need to continue to live in Christ, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. Christian education never ends. There's always more to learn, more to discover, more to enjoy, more to put into practice. And God's word doesn't just fill your head with information. It actually provides you with motivation. God's own power for Christian living. I know I shared this verse with you last weekend, but I think it's so timely. I want to share it with you again. Paul encourages in Ephesians chapter 1, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. 
Friends, we need that incredible power at our disposal to make it through the week. We need that power to fight off temptation and reject sinful living. We need that insight to recognize and refute false teaching. We need that confidence to defend our faith and to share our faith with the people around us. This power is going to help us have stronger marriages, resolve conflicts, mend fences, deal with setbacks, cope with hardships, and set God-pleasing priorities. Paul said, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. I delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. One of a pastor's greatest joys is confirming young people in the faith or leading new people through a Bible information class. But one of our greatest sorrows is seeing those same people drift away from Christ in the church, get swept away by false teaching, or get caught up in sinful living. Likewise, a teacher's greatest joy is helping their students enjoy these incredible spiritual discoveries and then apply them to day-to-day living. That joy has been Mrs. Melberg's for the past 25 years. And I can assure you that the best way that you can honor her is to take those lessons that you learn from her and apply them to your life every single day. That is our hope and prayer for all of you as well. Remember, the consequences of spiritual complacency and apathy are awful. But the blessings of ongoing spiritual grace are awesome. Let's make the most of the opportunities Christ sets before us then and make it our lifelong goal to discover hidden treasures through Christian education. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus, our risen and victorious Savior, we praise you for the atoning sacrifice by which you removed our sin and guilt and restored us to a right standing with our Father in heaven. May we never take that sacrifice for granted, but rather cherish your blessings and dedicate our lives to your glory. Enlighten us with the truth as we read and study your holy word. Empower us to defeat temptation, break free from sinful habits, and reject every wrong path. Set our hearts on fire with faith, hope, and love. Bless our efforts to build stronger connections with one another and involve more people in meaningful ministry opportunities. Help us make the most of the resources you set before us to glorify your name and build each other up in the faith. May nothing ever separate us from your love. Lord Jesus, you are the great physician of body and soul. And so with confidence, we commit to your care all who are sick or suffering. We pray for Miriam Kramer, who is being treated for cancer, Darla Schultz, who will undergo ankle surgery, for Don Zitlow, who was hospitalized and has now returned home, for Lois Wadekin, who is hospitalized, for Alan Bales, who is hospitalized, for a, a young student in our congregation who is undergoing a medical procedure, and also for Don Schultz's sister, Ellen, as she deals with COVID-19. Lord, cause your healing hand to rest on them. Bless all those doctors and nurses who have them under their care. Above all, we pray that you would comfort and strengthen them by your promises 
and your faithful love. Lord of life, we pray that you would comfort all those who mourn the death of Bill Gallagher. We thank you for having called him to faith and for having kept him in the faith to the end of his days. Comfort his family with the sweet hope of a joyful reunion in heaven. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the blessings you have given to Sarah Melbert as she celebrates her 25th anniversary in the teaching ministry. We thank you for all the, the blessings you have given to the children in her classroom as she has taught them God's word and taught them a biblical way of understanding our place in this world. We pray that you would continue to bless her ministry among us to the glory of your name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.